to get into Mad Max Fury Road, which I'm always really excited to get into. But before we do that, a little background, because this is the fourth entry in the Mad Max series. So here's the deal. Full disclosure, I've not seen all the Mad Max movies, and I don't feel like you need to. Maybe you can see them all and be a completist and whatever, but I think you can pick up the thread of what's going on with the little bit that I'm going to tell you. All right, so this goes back to 1981, uh, Australian New Wave Cinema. You've got this young up-and-coming actor named Mel Gibson, who is uh, cast as Max uh, Roktansky, who is uh, kind of like one of the last good cops. Uh, he's like the road warrior. His um, his job is basically to you know police the roads, maintain order, and what happens in uh, maintaining order is that he arrests somebody from one of the um, kind of powerful gangs and prosecutes him and everything, brings him to jail. And as a result of doing his job, uh, the gang turns on him and uh, murders his family. And so when he does this and he realizes that uh, not only did that happen, but this guy has now gotten out and there is no justice and whatever, he takes the law into his own hands and kind of flips a switch and becomes this other version, this very violent, bloody, dark uh, version of himself that once he has done the things that he has done in the movie to get vengeance for his family, he realizes he can't go back to the way he was. And so he basically just kind of roams the land um, looking to try to right the things that he did, which, you know, I, I guess, I mean, you can find it in the movie to forgive him for what he did, but he also does go somewhere where I don't think there's any coming back. So two movies go by and then uh, 1985, the last of the Mad Max movies comes out, Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome, and and that's it. And, you know, there's a song and everything, and people, uh, you know, enjoy the movie, and it's whatever. And 30 years goes by, and another one comes out, and people are like, where did this movie come from? Who is asking for this movie? The original director, George Miller, is like, I'm putting one out. We've got a great cast. We've got all these things. They shoot a movie, and it's pretty much an unfilmable movie until his wife, who is the editor for it, gets a hold of the footage and makes this masterpiece of a movie out of what the cast and crew kind of talked about as being kind of a real train wreck of a movie that didn't really have like a cohesive story to it. But we'll get to, we'll come back to that after it, or maybe we won't. Um, what you need to know about the movie is that like the world has kind of moved on. The world is ruled by warlords and gangs and like people's, uh, um, people have no memory of the, the way things were, like if the things are the way they are right now and like 30 years from now, things have descended because of like fighting and war and maybe nuclear fallout and like we've run out of gasoline and we've lost producing things. We have no law and order in any country or whatever. That's kind of where they are in Mad Max. You know, the warlords control the water. They control the production of weapons. They control the gasoline. And they've kind of descended into this, like these people who are uh, like, they, they kind of worship like, um, cars and vehicles and engines the way that you would a god of some sort. Like they they worship the V8 engine and that, and that kind of thing. And it seems kind of strange and weird, but at the same time, it's like nobody here is laughing about this cult. So like this is their way of life and, and there's not much for you to do in your life. You're either kind of a scavenger or if you're, uh, if you're a man, you can kind of maybe come up with one of the warlords and maybe you'll be kind of raised up to being a lieutenant. But most likely you're probably going to die um, doing something stupid. And by stupid, I mean something glorious that maybe your boys will see you doing and they'll like witness you or you know, this will make sense when you watch the movie. Like their only uh, uh, like identity in life is to die doing something bold because there is no other purpose to their life. They all have these tumors all over them and they're probably from radiation and there's just not a whole lot going for these people. That being said, there are some pretty great characters in here. Max, for one, who we'll get to, who is trying to redeem himself, as I said before, played by a different actor, by Tom Hardy. Um, say what you want about uh, say what you want about his performance. I think his grunting and whatever is pretty great. Um, you, you're not going to get a whole lot out of a guy who spends most of his time wa wandering the desert, never talking to anybody. But the real person I want you paying attention to here is Charlize Theron as Furiosa. She is um, the, the star of the show, and for good reason. She is capable. She is powerful. She is smart. She is brave. She is all these really great things. And she is, and Charlize Theron is this in so many of her movies, but uh, I don't think ever more so than in this movie because you've got Furiosa, you've got Max, 
who is kind of the sort of prototypical hero, the young, good-looking, strong, whatever male. Uh, and then you've got Immortan Joe, who is played by this older gentleman, who is kind of like the warlord that runs everything and owns everything and uh, like controls the women and controls their bodies and uses them for breeding. And, you know, the thing I've got to say about the movie as we get into it here is that I don't choose this movie lightly. I choose it because there is redeeming things about it that being said it is a little grotesque and it is a little bit well it's, it's a lot violent but uh it, it is grotesque and and to do that and in order to show what the women have to go through they i believe they have to show um you know some things that are maybe uncomfortable to see and there are some scenes that i think are pretty tastefully done um but they are not the kind of thing that you probably are used to watching or maybe will be a little bit surprising but if there is something that you find it to be challenging or something that you think didn't belong in this movie i'd love to talk about it and and to bring it up as like you know why did they have to include that why do you think they showed that uh to talk through it i don't have answers and i'm not interested in scolding you on like come on get over it it's okay to show that if you feel a certain way that something shouldn't have been shown and that it didn't make the movie better that's a valid thing we should talk about um, and then alternately, uh, I want to use this as part of our study of action movies and action, you know, what's the role of men, what's the role of women, what's the, who are our villains, that kind of thing, because there's a lot of really great characters in here, men and women both, and there's a lot of really terrible people, men and women both. And so I think this is an important one for us to watch, because I also think that a lot of you probably have not seen it. So I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. Get back to me on how you felt about it. One more thing. I thought I was done here, but I also want to make the point that it's not just me who feels this way about this movie. Like, this is a strange movie, but it's also kind of a gorgeous movie uh, to look at, and it does a lot of things really well. And uh, although I have mixed feelings about the Oscars and the Academy of Motion Pictures and that kind of thing, this movie did get a lot of love in a very uh, strong year. This is the year that Movies like Ex Machina came out, uh, The Revenant came out, Hateful Eight came out, uh, Spotlight, which ultimately won Best Picture. Like, there were a lot of really, really good movies. But Mad Max Fury Road really kind of cleaned up at the Oscars. If you look at these things, these are all the things that it was uh, nominated for. Production design, costume design, film editing, sound mixing, uh, sound editing, and makeup and hairstyling, which I know you can kind of turn your nose up and be like, yeah, what uh, costumes? But those kinds of things transport you. And without feeling like you're immersed in this movie, it's not the same thing. Think about when we watch Raiders of the Lost Ark and how you feel like you are there with Indiana Jones. You're on the U-boat. You're in the plane. You're in the, you're being, the boulders coming after you. When you're watching Groundhog Day, like they spend a lot of time making you feel like you are in Punxsutawney. Uh, in Mad Max Fury Road, the setting of the movie and the characters and the, the way they look and the cars and everything. Oh, the cars are amazing. They built everything and they drove everything and they blew it all up and they jumped it hundreds of feet in the air and threw grenades and stuff and whatever. And like they did all the stuff that you see in the movie and that really immerses you in it. And that's something you can't fake. And so it's very deserved of these Oscars. It was also nominated for Best Picture, which is not nothing, and Best Director and Best Cinematography, which, you know, is up against some really heavy hitters. And I can understand why it didn't win. Uh, but those other ones, like, that's not a fluke. That was not like a gimme or something. This movie is gorgeous and beautiful, and it's a different kind of movie, but that doesn't mean it's not worthy of our appreciation. So at, at the very least, looking at this movie uh, should be visually entertaining for you.